Uh, everything just happened off motivation. Every time somebody closed the door on me or tried to, can I curse on you, Kurt? Yeah, Every definitely. time somebody tried to shit on me, yeah. that motivated me. Mm. You know what I mean? So it was like, you throw a brick on me, I'm building a house. If you're alive, subscribe. As I always say, if you're alive, subscribe. Look, make sure you guys push that subscribe button. Make sure you push the like button. And like I always say, if you want to leave me a comment, leave me a comment. I talk back. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you like my videos. Let me know if you want me to kind of do a little something different. Not that I'm going to do it or nothing, but just give me some little feedback on what I got going on. But look, man, today, y'all know I always bring smart people on my show. I always tell y'all that I'm going to bring the top tier the smart people that you can kind of like get some from instead of just having a podcast like you can't get nothing from these people like we ain't always having fun but today i got somebody like he really needs no introduction but i'm gonna introduce him black rob what's going on homie what's up man how you doing man i'm yeah. doing good man <laughs> always uh start my show up i want to thank you for your sacrifice like um i don't even remember where he came from I don't, I, it's either Memphis or Mississippi. It's one of them. But uh, we, we gonna get to know Black Rob a little more today because this one of the guys that actually came to Nashville and has put a stamp in it. So where, where, where you actually like, where was you, where was you from, Black Rob? St. Louis. Mm, St. Louis. I was wrong from both <laughs> yeah. of them. Wrong both of them. What about you here from St. Louis? Uh, TSU. Mm. I went to Tennessee State. I did a, a short stop in Memphis though for like a year and a half. Then I came here, go to college. Let me. I want to TSU real quick. You know, I'm a uh, my people are TSU alumni. I didn't make it to college, but <laughs> just and we was having a conversation about this other day. But I'm asking you, like, how can the state owe TSU two billion dollars, and they just kind of owe them, and like, you know, they owe you, but they don't pay you. How does that work? Just um, since you, I know you alumni. Yeah, yeah, for sure, okay. for sure. I think it just all popped up to everybody when they heard it. They like, man. The state owed TSU two point eight billion or something like that. That over time that they should have got, but I think it's no different than what the state and you know what the government owes the United States owe us for slavery. You know what I mean? Ooh, you know what I mean? Man, so it's go to hell. It's the same thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? You think about what two point eight billion over that much time with accrued interest and all that stuff, and would have built up over. 30 years where TSU would have been had they got their rights. They do rights. You know what I mean? All of Jefferson would have probably been developed, would have led to more black businesses and more black success and just everything had they had that money. So I think if you just put on what we don't have because they didn't get that money, it should be more than two point billion, two point eight billion, whatever it is. And 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 I cause I went in TSU, I think it was about like a two about two or three months ago. And um I, I was like, man, TSU need a lot of work. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. And so, so what we need to be doing, the guys like me that never been to college and got mm. platforms to try to make us where we can get that money. Well, TSU, I don't, <laughs> I don't think it's nothing we can say to make the state give TSU okay. that money. Like we, I mean, they got a big sign when you get off on Jefferson and say, yeah. we give us our money. Yeah, most definitely. But you know what I mean? It's all a it's the powers that be that's gonna make that happen. You know what I mean? It's the powers that be. You know, when we get all 40 acres in a mule. Yeah. You know what I mean? We still thing. waiting we on still that. Fight. You know, <laughs> that was written in the Emancipation Proclamation that we were supposed to get 40 acres in a mule. Mm. That was in there. But when they killed Lincoln, the next president took it off. And and even like having fun with it and laughing, but like what you're saying is really like a true statement. Yeah, like it's sure. the same kind of game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. And so, what what did you study in TSU? Uh, what did, when you came in, what did you want to be? You know what I'm saying? A dentist. Mm. I went to school to be a doctor. I actually got went through the whole process. You know, filled out application, go to dental school, even got acceptance to some. Um, I was just doing it because I felt that's the easiest way to get some money at yeah. that time. I was like, what can I do to get some money? And it was like, be a dentist. Wow. But then when I got Good in- choice though, but- Yeah, they yeah they they, they make money. And mm -hmm. you know, back then it wasn't a lot of careers and professions that people was doing to make money. Uh, So when I, but when I was in college, I was making money. So I was like, 
I don't have to go to dentistry no more. <laughs> I'm making money. Why I got to go to dental school no more? But I wanted to finish what I started. But had I pursued my my belief and my passion, my faith, I would have just went to whatever I really thought I could do, yeah. my passion, and just went through there and believed in that and did it anyway because it led me back here anyway. But but now, do you think you, you made the right decision? Not going to dental school? Yeah. For sure. Good. Okay, so look. So how did you start doing parties? Like, Black Rob <laughs> and Crisis came out of nowhere. But I, th I think it did it start with Crisis? Or? Man, Crisis is like one of my best friends. Well, so definitely. yeah, for sure. It always it started with them, Crisis and Tears, for sure. And what made Black Rob come in and say, like, we just finna throw parties? Mm -hmm. Man, so I'm big on motivation. So how yeah. I started was, um, first I was hosting from St. Louis. The, the, I went to high school, it was a big party scene, you know what I mean? In, in high school, we mm -hmm. had like Jay Nix and, um, you go by Stewie Rock in Atlanta, then we had uh, Shorty the Prince. He was rapping, but they was all hosting parties. So when I got to TSU, it was no scene in that nobody was hosting parties. I was like, if I just host the parties, I can brand myself. People gonna think they my parties because yeah. ain't nobody saying nothing. I looked at that as an opportunity. <laughs> so I got I uh I hollered at this uh guy named AJ. He was a DJ at TSU. I said, let me host all your parties. And um, he let me host it. it. People was like, you doing a good job hosting. And um, they was like, you know, when your next party? It wasn't my party. I was hosting for free. But then you were like, I'm a, you kind of just took you know on I mean? to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I was just the one that's doing it. So I was hosting for free and pe branding myself. All the stu TSU students was following me. And then after that, uh, I went to a club. I went to a club. Um, my homeboy was throwing a party at a club. It was back in the day, it was 615. 615 and, um, shout he, out to Gaddy, 615. He, he wouldn't let me he get did. in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the dude that was doing it, uh -huh. he was like, go home and change. I was out of dress code. I was like, bet. I had to drive all the way to Bellevue. I changed. I come back. He like, uh, we closed. We ain't let nobody else in. I'm like, dang. I just, went I just drove all ass, I did yeah. it. You know what I mean? Because I'm following, you know, follow your rules. But I, I was mad. Yeah. I said, I never... Wait in line for another party again, again. <laughs> and that was like my motivation. I said, I never do that again. Like, yo, you, I felt so bad. I said, I'm gonna start throwing my own parties. Mm. And, and then, that's where it started. And so when you start throwing your own parties, like, did you have like a idea of like, I'm gonna throw my own parties, then I'm gonna do this? Or did you have like a plan behind nah, it? No, everything just happened off motivation. Mm -hmm. Every time somebody closed the door on me or tried to, can I curse on you, curse? Yeah, most Every time ever. somebody tried to shit on me, yeah. That motivated me, mm. you know what I mean. So it was like you throw a brick on me, I'm building a house. So all I used all them bricks as motivation. So I start throwing parties because I couldn't get in the club. So yeah. if I can't get in the club, throw my own parties. Party. So I, you know you can get a club. Man. I get in the club because yeah. of my party. So I was doing that well, and then after that, I I just wanted to do parties. I was cool with that because we was being successful. But then the club owners were so, you know, shrewd that I'm like, I don't even want to, I don't want, I got to own my own clubs now because y'all ain't doing business right. Either they, right. either they not doing good business or, you know what I mean, just call a spade a spade. The white venues didn't want black people in there. Mm, you know what I mean? Yeah. They ain't want me in there. Most they ain't definitely. want us in there. You know what I mean? Because y'all was, y'all parties was super duper, super duper lit. Yeah. But let me, let me ask you a question. Do you think like, with throwing parties, is it the, the like the money on the door or not making the money on the bar? Like as 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 Black Rob being the big promoter he is, what you think you supposed to get? At at, mean, at, at, at that, at one that time. age, I was one of the I wanted the door money. I didn't even know I wasn't even fathom. I was new. I didn't know about no bar money. Yeah. I mean, I knew about that it, is. but they never really talked to me about that. I was happy to work deals. To get the club, they was charging me for the club. So let alone, I knew I wouldn't get no bar money. Yeah. But at the same time, it was just the business behind it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then the club owners wasn't doing good business, and then the white owners didn't want black people in their yeah. venue. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I used to have to send my white friends in there to try to book the venue. You know what I mean? That's how I used to get some of these venues. I used to send my white homeboys in there. Can you tell them it's for you? You tell them you go to Vanderbilt. Then they'd let them get it. But if I'd have went in there as a black man, they would told me no. Mm. Yeah, Just period. They ain't trying to let, let nobody in there. But do you think like, trying to let black a, a, a lot of a lot of your business sense, did they come from school, like going to school? Like, what's your background 
Rob, just prior to even not even being college and high school, like mom and dad type of, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I grew up with my mom and my dad. We ain't come from much, yeah. but my mom raised foster kids. You know mm. what I mean? So we ain't have a lot, never had a lot, you know what I mean? But my mom always had a heart, you know what I mean? I think that's where I get my heart from. Like she always had a heart, like she brought in kids all the time. Foster kids, we it was a we had a three bedroom house with eight kids in there. I got three sisters. My mom always had four foster kids in our, in my household from the time I so grew up. I always to, had like a big, big family. Always had a big house, but we, my mom was only making like twenty five thousand a year, twenty three thousand mm. a year. You know, what I mean, maybe not that much, but she was making a stretch. But she wanted to help these kids whose mom was on drugs or something like that, and just help them out. But I was like, that taken away from what we already don't have. But I yeah. never understood. You know her understanding of just trying to help, and she used to help these kids. They didn't know how to read. They was thirteen, didn't read. Learn them, get them. The, it's all about your environment. But we was in the hood. It was it was get them. St. Louis, Minerva. That's where I got Minerva from. Yeah, but the, and this is the thing with knowing you, Black Rob. Like you would think, like Black Rob ain't really never been to no hood. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just how perception. you carry yourself. But yeah. that's that's and you know, good. We, as as black men, we always think we gotta say where we from yeah. as a as a testament of how tough we is or how who we is as a person. I never do that. Most definitely. You know yeah. what I mean? You want to show how good you is or you want to be good, put on for where you from. You know what I mean? Yeah. What you doing with your life. That's 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 real gangster. Most you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I grew up in the hood. Yeah. Probably worse than most of the hood people that say they from the hood, yeah. but it ain't where I'm from. Cuz you you're just my mentality. Yeah. I never carried a hood mentality. Being from the hood is a mentality. You know what I mean? It could be people from the suburbs that do the craziest stuff. Yeah, most they have a hood mentality. Definitely. I never I never wanted to embrace that hood mentality because everybody I seen was dead, jail, on drugs. Facts. Why would I want to be that? You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to be like, you know what I mean, them people I see on TV. Yeah. But I want to be successful. And and like you said, it's the mental mindset. But you got to think, for, for a person like me, knowing Black Rob, I remember your come up from... Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just parties. So, like, everybody, like, some people might meet you today and just respect, oh, that's the club on Black Rob. But me, I respect the, the fact that I remember Black Rob was just on the grind. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, how did the how did it flip over from now I'm parties, now I'm ready to get in my own my, situations? It go back. It was just, it was a situation where they just didn't want me to, uh, I got tired of being told no. Mm-hmm. I, get, I got tired of being shit and all. Club owners and then the other venue owners. It was hard to get venue. It's still hard. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just do my own thing. You know what I mean? To, to alleviate this problem, I'm gonna just do my own thing. I never wanted to be a club owner. I wanted to be a radio host. Mm. You know what I mean? I never wanted to be a it club was, owner. You a, a great host. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I wanted to do <laughs> but, radio. So you saying they that, they forced you in that? They forced my hand. <laughs> they you know what I mean? All right, bet y'all don't want me to do this. I'm gonna do this. Like I, I'm I'm gonna do it because I know how to do it. But also because I'm tired of trying to ask y'all to let me do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and so what about clubs in Nashville? Like, are we better working together or working against each other? What what you think? In your mind. I mean, I don't think you don't get nothing working against each other. You know what I mean? It's already hard. Yeah. Like people don't understand. It's hard being a business owner of any such. Yeah, most of You don't you don't win by working against each other. But I think it's the it's the mindset of scarcity. We don't think that's a lot out there for us. So yeah. we got to feel like it's only enough pieces of the pie for me. Yeah. If he come, he going to eat all the pie. But you don't realize that pies don't stop. It's a big piece. Everybody can win if we figure out how to work together. I don't, I don't believe in all that. That's good. And so, and so with you, okay, Black Rob, he gets Minerva Avenue, where he's from, mm-hmm. and then he gets The weekend. Mm. Where does Black Rob get the faith from to say, you know what, I'm gonna open up two clubs? Man, I opened up more than two clubs. I'm just saying, bitch. Oh, I'm just man. talking about though at that, and I know you done, <laughs> but it, it was like those were like at the same time. time. So I opened weekend in 2012. Okay. I opened Agenda in 2015, mm. 14. Then I opened Minerva in 2018. <laughs> I opened Weekend Memphis in 2018. <laughs> Um, if you're live, uh, subscribe. <laughs> Go ahead. But yeah, okay. This is what I want to know. This is just a personal question for me. And and, and this and this thing came around. Yeah. How the hell did you guys get a weekend in the State Farm Arena? You mean the FedEx Farm? The FedEx, my, my fault. FedEx Farm. My fault. Yeah, yeah FedEx yeah. Farm. 
Um, my partner, he uh he worked that deal. He worked that deal with FedEx. Um opportunity came. We we weren't too far from FedEx. We was already in Memphis. We was doing good in Memphis. They offered us the opportunity and it went from there. Yeah. But, and, and how do you make it look so easy back around? Like, is club owning easy? What's a what's the process of owning your own spot and being <laughs> successful? It's Not hard. just on your own, on you your own it. spot first and then being, being successful. successful. It's hard. Is people because I'm sometimes I'm I be accessible to people sometimes because they see me. Yeah. And I always want to lend my knowledge. So sometimes people might see me and do things they think it's easy, but it's not. It's very, very hard. Um, I think that people don't understand how hard it is, but in order to do it, I first and foremost, real estate. Yeah. It's that's number one. It can't get no real estate. And you know Nashville real estate ain't you no game. Can't. And you got to, you you got some prime spots. For sure. So we so, so we're gonna talk about real estate next, yeah. but you know, how how is, how does that start to get the crowd and stuff to come? You know what I'm saying? To get I believe people just buy into people's brands. I believe that, you know, it's of course it's gonna be people that like what they like, but if you do what you do and you do it at long enough, people will buy into what you're doing. doing. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm sure you started, you didn't have 50,000 subscribers. Oh, no. You no. have to build it up. I had to build it up. You know what I mean? So <laughs> like, it's just, a, it just take it over time. People seen those parties in 2007. I was starting back then. Yeah. 2006, I was I was playing my seeds then. Well, yeah, I can't even play no games with you like that. You started the club, you already had the crowd yeah. anyway. You yeah, know this what I'm my saying? Third, this is my third uh, team. This is my third career. It's what like club LeBron. owners you like working with in Nashville? Like, give me club some of your club owners that you... That you <laughs> that you like to work with, club I know it's a, so yeah. so. Okay. I think that the word club owner is like is you need we need we gotta not the one not the own real estate, but just no no no. Okay. I'm saying in 2023 okay. is so I like working with hospitality businessmen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because clubs are so we we call we can't call everything clubs these yeah, days. Most definitely. But I like I have a great relationship with the people that own um Noir and Link. Uh, I got great relationships. Which is, I got good relationships with everybody, but I, I work with anybody if they want to work. If I can help you, mm -hmm. I'm going to lend a helping hand to you. You know what I mean? It's, 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 um, I can't even think about who are on, it ain't too many black owned businesses. It's so it's know. like, I don't, I mean, I, I, when you was work. out there though, when you was out there, oh, when I was out there, there who out I like there, working who, with, who, who did you, what's the club on? I like, oh, back then, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as a promoter, yeah, yeah, oh, when you, back when then, you were who just, I like, not when you with. were just a big club not, owner, not, when you was promoting, right back then, yeah, back like, then. I, let me say this, I right. learned a lot from all of them, okay, I made a lot money and I learned a lot from Terry, okay, oh, yeah, I mean, he was, he was, bar flies, Terry, bar flies, okay, shout out to Terry, yeah, I learned a lot from him. I give him, I, and I say that in a way that not not necessarily I learned how to run a club, club. or nothing like yeah. that, but just the simple fact that he had the real estate in order for us to get our ideas off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He had the he had the real estate. He had the venues for us to be able to continue to prosper, and for that, I you know I'm grateful for that. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so even with um. With you, Black Rob, like, with owning these spots, how do you keep the mental mindset to, like, because you have to be there sometime and right. all, your squad and stuff like that. Have you built a relationship with with your team to where, like, everything is running pretty smooth, that good guys? Right. You know what I'm saying? I got a good team. I got a great team. Good. You know what I mean? I don't, you can't do nothing alone. Yeah. You got to have a good team. You got to have people you trust. Mm -hmm. I got people I trust, and I got a good team. So, you know what I mean? You only going to go as far as your team. And so how you pick your team? Like I saw you today on News Channel 2. Yeah. With yep, your cook, what's your cook name? Chef Truesdale. Okay, so how do you go about picking like this guy here is working with, with me? You can see it in people. Okay. Like even when you're doing this podcast, you know what I mean? I saw it and I see something. I got vision. Yeah, you know I, I mean, I that's my it. biggest I thing. You, I know that. I got a great vision yeah. and I see stuff and people sometimes they don't see. Like I'm sitting here, but I see you doing something so much bigger five years from now. Two years from now, even a year from now, yeah. so I can look at some of some of the people that I want to work with, and I can see, you know, I can see inside to the person that they are, and I'm like, yeah, I want to work with him. You know what I mean? I see he's gonna be great, and that's what I felt about my show. That's and I brought him from Philadelphia. Man, that's good. So, what makes Black Rob happy? 
Like Peace. what does what what does Black Rob like? You know what I'm saying? Man, I watch movies like, all day. You know what I'm saying? If Fifty Cent come out with a TV show every week <laughs> and give me some good Netflix stuff, I'm good. Why have Black Rob never had a public relationship? A public relationship, you know what I'm like you know. Well, I'm just, <laughs> this, 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 hold up. I'm just saying, hey, you know how on. all the club owners and stuff, they hey. always got that. You know what I'm saying? Why my, have Black Rob? My my relationship. Well, the my my girl don't live here. Okay. You know what yeah, I mean? Okay. Yeah, okay. she don't live here. So you straight on that. Yeah, yeah, I'm straight <laughs> on that. But um that that and you know, uh You I think don't know. that's what's kept you like really, really about your business because like Robert, I didn't I ain't never seen you just super just being the club owner and messing with a thousand women. <laughs> nah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you nah, have or not. Nah, you know what I'm saying? I'm nah, just saying. Nah. I never seen you so you know the club owners that do be messing with a thousand women. <laughs> yeah, I know, oh my yeah. Lord Jesus, you know too much. Oh, so my how do Lord. how do you, you refrain from that? Man, it's it's discipline. I think as you get older, you just you get a you it's discipline, man. Okay. But you done been it's there. It's discipline. I, ha I mean, every okay. man has been okay. there. Like, women are the most beautiful things ever God ever created. Well, like, definitely. yeah. But at the same time, like, they can tear down kingdoms. You get what I'm saying? Oh. I know the power of a woman. Yeah. But I also, you know, when it's time to work, it's time to work. You know what I mean? Like, I made it, you know, this far, being focused, being disciplined. When it's time to work, it's time to work. Yeah. Of course, you got to have time to fun and play, but can't nothing mess up the goal, the vision. You gotta stay the course. You know what I mean? Like you can't let nothing direct derail you. Like I wanna get married, I wanna have kids. That time's gonna come. Like, you know um, they're gonna be throwing rocks at your way. It's not not right. <laughs> they're gonna be they gonna be throwing rocks at Black man, Rob. Listen, you know what I'm saying? Listen, listen. Ah <laughs> uh, man, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> but in a good way, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I take it. But I mean I want I want to be married. I want to have kids. So but at the same time, I want I want to have I want to build I want to leave something for my family, and I want to build that. So it's like I, I I know it's been times where like I even myself I fall short. So it's mm -hmm. been times where I could have been making stuff happen and I wasn't disciplined. I wasn't focused. So now in my thirties I'm disciplined. I'm focused, and I I can look away when I'm I can stay focused and not stare at the distractions. And you know a lot of men. I don't drink, I stopped drinking liquor too. Oh, wow. So, you know okay. what I mean? That helped out a lot. You know what I mean? I stopped drinking liquor. I, you know, I make sure I'm focused 100% of the time. And it's just like, I got a bigger, I got a bigger goal in mind. And so you don't got no kids or nothing? Right no, I ain't got no I'm, kids. Do you think like that's what really, in your mind, like I can't do this right now because I got to, I got to build I got, a legacy I got first, it. you know what I'm saying? It, in a way I do, but I still want kids, man. Yeah. Like I be, I like, I be sitting like, man, Cause I'm a, I, I love kids. Mm -hmm. Like all my, my, all my managers know when they bring their kids around, I love kids. Um, I want to have kids, but I don't want a baby mama. Mm. You know what I mean? I've been big on that. I want a baby mama. You I don't want, want that in-house wife. Yeah, nice I want to. Yes, I want a, I want to build a family. So I don't want to have a baby mother. And um, yeah. Do I you just, think life outside the club, like in your mind? Black Rob, how long do you think you're going to be able to just be in, in the clubs? You know what I'm saying? I ain't really in the clubs, though. Well, you ain't in there, but you, <laughs> as I you mean, run, how, you how might come I... in. I'm just saying the ones you run yeah, come in. How... Club, clubs, restaurants. I'm like, sad. you're a busy man. Right, but I feel like nothing is, you don't want to be old and have no family. Like, I'm going to have kids, okay. for sure. I just haven't had them yet. yet. Okay. I'm going to have kids. I'm going to get married. I just haven't had it yet. Yeah. Okay. It's going to come. And I don't I can work like balance. You know what I mean? Okay. I feel like it's not that I'm not purposely not trying to have kids. It's just God hasn't given me that yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it's going to happen. I feel it's I'm going to have kids. I'm going to get married. I'm going to do all that. But at the same time, uh my business is you like the guy that um own Landry's, they own a whole bunch of restaurants. He got to be in his 60s or 70s or billions. Like, you can still own restaurants and yeah. own hospitality companies and all that stuff and still have a family. Like, you don't have to be there all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah your system, you got your systems in place, they run themselves. Like, you know, David Grubman, he, he owns all the biggest uh, clubs and restaurants in Florida. And 
He got family. He got kids. Yeah, yeah. He's got to be in his 40s. So, you know what I mean? I think it just it gets better as you get older. I think family life brings out a different side of you. Everybody I know that got kids tell me it just brought out a, a different side right of them. On. You know what I mean? It just makes you, you know, you just appreciate it more. And so do with even though you're in the club, do you actually like to go to the club or did you just like the host to make money? Or did you actually just, that's what you like to do? I loved it. Okay. You got to have a passion for it. Yeah, most definitely. You yeah. can't do nothing. If you ain't passionate about nothing, you can't do it. I was passionate about hosting. I was passionate about clubs. I was passionate about everything I did in that in that business. You know what I mean? Like, it's something that I love. So I don't do it just for the money. Okay. I do it because I love it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love creating concepts. I love seeing my visions come to life. And so, and it's just like with Minerva. Minerva ain't that big of a club, but it's nah. big enough. Right. So how do you bring in the big stars like you bring them in? With just in my thought, like I'm thinking, if you bringing in the stars like you bringing the Soldier Boys and the and the DJ Envies and stuff like that, like how do you pay those guys and still make not money? have a yeah, you know what I mean, make make money, or Man. do you just do it for that a certain weekend? Sometimes, or sometimes a lot of people do stuff for looks. Okay, like we used to do that all the time, like yeah. man. Man, Christ, you always say, man, you would do this party, man. It's a good look. I'm tired of doing looks. I want to make money. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, so many people don't know. Like, you see all these big parties and this stuff. Ain't no money being made. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff was done, did for looks. Like, on my end, though, like, Minerva, like, if I bring somebody, now that I own a club, I'm figuring out how to be profitable. Okay. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm, I didn't did it so long that I know if I can make my money back. Yeah, exactly. That's if I can asking. make my money back, it's a win. Yeah. So it don't matter if you can make it back like with the bar and everything yeah, and for action sure. because you I know you don't have parties these, down Minerva and twenty dollars yeah. to get in when it's a, a star in there, you right. know what I'm saying? So these these artists, these rappers, these Instagram models, these influencers, they cost so much. You're not making your money just back on the door no more. That's what that's what like that them days right. is over. Like you gotta have a, a cut of the bar or something. You can paying sixty, seventy thousand. How you gonna make that back? Yeah. Like how many people is it gonna take to make that back? You gonna break even? Yeah. Club owner gonna walk out like this. Yeah. Scrooge McDuck. You gonna be like, golly. <laughs> nah, I don't, yeah, I don't like so it's certain times like people be like, Nashville needs to bring more artists, but they don't understand that costs so much money. They do, they do. And what does Nashville need to do better on the club scene to make it easier for you guys that's really owning clubs and wanna bring more? I tell people all the time, just with being around club owners and stuff so long. Y'all be wanting to bring more and do more, but what do the people need to do better for you guys so we can see that? I think it's support. Okay. Like, people don't support a lot. Nashville is like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday city. Mm -hmm. And then they don't get a lot of tourism. If we had more black tourism, the city would grow more. Yeah. You know what I mean, because you can't depend on your locals. Most A lot of big cities thrive off tourism. Broadway doesn't thrive off Black locals, locals going or on Broadway. Local. It's tourism. tourism. Yeah. All them tourism. That Nashville do billions of dollars in tourism. Mm -hmm. So it's like we need the city to pump more tourism into the black sit the black economy. We also need people to support all the businesses yeah. that are going out. Like you gotta, you have to go out more because they say we ain't got enough to do. Well, if you go out more, there'll be more to do because there'll be more discretionary income on these businesses to open more stuff or more people to open more stuff. It's just a cycle. You know what I mean? It's, it's a cycle. Everybody needs everybody. It's a big ecosystem. And so, and I know you said you can feel people out and I get that one thing, but what does Black Rob, what is Black Rob doing? And I know everybody's calling you to trying to do some type of business. You know what I'm saying? Right. What if, uh, how, how do you choose people who you actually want to do some business with? You know what I'm saying? Man, so like, it, I think back in my, back in when I started, a lot of people used to hit me up to try to do business. I don't yeah. really get them calls no more. Okay, because I think people know, like, man, Black Rob doing his own thing. <laughs> I mean, I ain't, he ain't gonna do that. <laughs> like, yeah, I ain't gonna because I I feel like business is like relationships. What's that? You know what I mean? Like, no, I ain't married, but if I got business partners, that's a marriage. Yeah, y'all almost married. definitely. It's all and yeah, you know who your kids is. I ain't got kids, but them businesses, the people working. Is your kids? Yeah, yeah, everything that business, everything within that business is your kid. Y'all married. That's I, so I know. Like, and you got to ask yourself: Do you want to go down that rabbit hole with another person? Because sometimes mm -hmm. it work out, sometimes it don't. Anytime money involves stuff, get real tricky. It just get real tricky, man. People act different. 
And how are you with your with your employees that work for you? Are they straight in contact with you, or just do everybody got a chain of command to go through? You know, it's what I'm always saying? a chain of command. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. Yeah, we yeah. got managers that they call. Like, you know, what I mean, if some it's an issue, even when it comes to um, like customers, like they come in places, like go get black rob. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> like you can't do that. Yeah. Like, no, like I'm, I could be sitting there in a meeting with somebody, and people like, mom, come here, let me tell you something. Like, bro. I'm talking, I'm mean. I'm, like I got managers to do that. Like that's yeah. that's disrespectful. Think about yeah, that. Yeah. If you at work, you on the phone, I walk into your thing. Hey, come here for a second. But people feel so it's the entire. Do they feel like because they got access to you because they've been knowing Black Rob so long? Yeah, Everybody, so people just because Black Rob on this spot, go get Black Rob. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I know Black Rob. Well, I know it's all that. But I feel like that's like in, in all my friends that own clubs, even anywhere around the country, they all it's in the city. They it's. It's, it's always like that. And, and so what made you move from clubs to, like, restaurant? I'm talking about the supper club. Yes, sir. Who came up with that and why? Supper club, that's actually um, something my partner, it was an idea my partner, uh, Joe, came up with. He wanted to do, he big, he bougie. So he wants to do this. He, he wants to do it. <laughs> yeah. I ain't heard no complaints, so. Right, you know right. What I mean? But he, he, he came up with it in Memphis. Mm. Um and um opened one in Memphis and then um an opportunity came by for us to do something in Nashville. So when he came, you know, had a vision for it and ran with it. Mm. So yeah, that's how that that's the supper club. Cause it originally it was gonna be season S E N D, season supper club, but then he went with supper club on second and then it was supper club on Bell Court. Oh man, that's hard. And I, I guess we can't deny that uh that Black Rob's a good dude on the strip of your relationships, like the Titans and all. Uh, you know, we all kind of go for the, if we got the popping spot, all the celebrities and the Titans come, do they actually kind of hit you up before they come be like, hey, Rob, I'm going to the spot, or are they just popping in? Because they always there at, at all your spots. I think it's a little bit of both. I got good relationships with Titans. I don't, see, I don't look at, like a lot of them uh, are my friends, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So I got good relationships with them people. So it's just like they call me regularly, you know what I mean. It's like, yeah. hey, what you doing? Hey, I'm going here. Or I'm, I'm gonna pull up at your spot. Just same way, um, a regular or just not a regular, but anybody else would come. Like my my close friends would call me and support me. Like, hey, bro, you open a spot, I'm gonna come support you. It's just that you know they play football or they might be somebody mm -hmm. that was, you know, quote unquote popular, but, you know, even the, the least popular person, they're going to support me because I got a good relationship with them. I try to build those relationships so they can call me and hit me and they, you know, come and support me. Okay. So, like so what what separates Black Rob from, because this, this club owner stuff, you, you know, we play around, we love it. <laughs> this club owner stuff is really exciting to me. Right. Because I, I didn't actually saw everybody do it. Yeah. What separates Black Rob from the Gaddies and the Teagues and the DJs? You know what I'm saying? Just, I mean, what, and not this ain't no competition thing. I'm just no, it what ain't, separates. It, it, it ain't. I I think okay. that I'm different from everybody. It's, okay, I'm different. Like, <laughs> <laughs> listen, man, you funny. Okay, so listen, <laughs> listen, um. I seen your interview with Gaddy. With Gaddy. Okay. Gaddy's a great guy. He gave me opportunity to, like I said, him and Terry. I think that, like I said, I was when you when you, when you seen me and you seen me out, you was yeah, like, bro, you, I need I, you. Was, <laughs> I wasn't familiar with nothing. I didn't know. I didn't know yeah. he even did. I was like, what is let me go. Pull go this up. I pull it up. I'm like, let me look at this. This is interesting. I didn't know. You told me. Yeah, I so did. you fed me that and, and information. I, I showed Tina. I did. Me, that's, that's I did. All I did. Facts. Everything okay. you said is facts. I'm going to put it on the table. Yeah. You fed me that information. I did. You say I you did. need to look. Did you see what Gaddy said? Yeah. <laughs> exact words. So I only want, like, yeah, that's, I did that's, that. Yes. I did. I did. He said I that. tried to start he something. Said, he said, you know I was like, saying? man, listen, man, I looked at it. Then he was like, bro, I need you on the show. My exact words were, 
No, I ain't doing it because I don't. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not. I said I ain't doing the show because I don't like how you responded to it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you egged so him did. on. I am, that's so all did. facts. That's what he said. I said I yeah. said I'm not doing like it because I don't up. feed into that. Yeah. I said man, I don't like. I don't like how you. I don't like how you responded to that. <laughs> That would tell you said I don't like your response Honestly, and I didn't like his. I didn't like you your response. Saying? I didn't like his <laughs> because you can't you can't mention clubs in Nashville mm. with the most humility and humbleness without Sammy. Mm. Facts. Period. You can't. It's Nobody. Impossible. You can't. I did it on every level at the highest. Not and I didn't even look at Nashville as my competition. And I like I I started this conversation saying I gave the people that gave me opportunity they flowers. Sex. But who am I to sit here and not give flowers to the people who do it good? There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I can say that Gaddy did his thing. I can say Terry helped me a lot. Yeah, I, I told that. And you got it. Yeah, recorded. and you ain't tripping. You weren't tripping, tripping off of it. Yeah. And I can say that it's yeah. guys that's doing it now. Yeah. You got. You got JG that does great at what he do. You got um Carol that's doing great, great. at vibes. Yeah. You got um who else? Uh Chris has got Willie B's. Like, I can say everybody's man, if you in business, I salute you. Right. So to see that, I was like, nah. I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. <laughs> what because, he told me to. <laughs> because that ain't that ain't that ain't real. Like yeah. you can you can you can be confident in yourself and still you know what I mean? Respect. And give, it, and give respect. others that. Yeah, just yeah. not the older people. Mo did it. Mo gave me plenty of opportunity. I got to tilt my hat to Mo. Yeah. He, everybody that ever let me rent their clubs gave me opportunity to voice my expression, and my art. You know what I mean? Because some people didn't open them doors for me. Thanks. So I appreciate them for opening them doors for me and even allowing me to use their establishment because it's their establishment. They didn't have to let me use that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. I'm going to pay respects to the people that's doing it that did it, I'm going to pay respects to the people that's doing it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Way. Anybody. Because to them, like, they comparing, they say Jordan, the GOAT, some people say LeBron. They yeah. only going by yeah. what they see. see. I'm the one that lived in both eras. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <Hey>. Hello. <laughs> I mean. You're allowed to subscribe. Hello. Hey, you I'm just saying, I didn't Thanks. seen everybody. Thanks. Yeah. I didn't been here, and humbly, I didn't been here since 2005. It's almost 20 years. And you actually been nonstop to now. Think about it. I'm just, I ain't, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, not picking those I'm signs. saying, I'm like, just... I was doing what everybody was doing when they was doing it. And still doing it. Still doing it. At a high level. Mm. And, and I it, moved on to restaurant. And I moved on to do something nobody else did. That's like <laughs> LeBron with Cleveland. Miami, with Cleveland, LA. and LA. <laughs> you done been with all of it. I done been all that. I done did parties, lounges, nightclubs, restaurants. Mm. All of it. And I don't even see how myself stopping. I'm not even hitting my peak yet. Mm. This, this, I'm doing, I, everything I'm doing now is to motivate somebody to say, J. Cole said this, this is a guy somewhere eating cereal right now, rapping. Trying to be, trying to take my spot. I'm a sign him. Mm. Me, it's somebody right now wanting to do this. I'm going to find him. Because my job is not to be the best. My job is to be the best Rob, but also create a better Rob mm. in somebody else. Jay-Z said, it took me 26 years to find my path. My only goal is that my son does it in half. So at 13, he's Mazel Tov. At 13, that means you cut, it's about somebody taking my mistake, me taking what I did and cutting out my mistakes. That's the game. That's what I believe in. If it ain't somebody, it's just going to be my son. Because I'm giving the game to somebody and they can cut my mistakes out. You know what I mean? That's where I win. It ain't about me. Everything I'm building now is for somebody else to do it better. To learn what I'm doing to do it better. That's black economics. How, how many jobs you think you done created, Black Rob? Just, Thousands. That would that would have been, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause I Thousands. I know some happy people that work for you. I know some happy people that work working and worked. I'm just yeah, I'm just that, I'm like, just speaking on a personal, you know what I'm yeah, saying? I experience. Ha- I know some happy people. 
I, I, I didn't help people make a lot of money. And people that help me make a lot of money. Everything yeah. that I do, I turn it back. Because it's no me without them. It's no them without me. We a team. You know what I mean? So I don't sit and say what I am. I'm confident in who I am, but I understand it can all be taken. But I also know what God put in me is for me. Do you think people done took that confidence as arrogance? And not for you, but I'm just saying just for anybody. But for you. Success but, scares but, but, people. Okay. Success scares okay. people. People's success scares people. People, yeah. People look at Titans, and they think they better than everybody. Why you think I'm better than you? Why he think he better than you? Because he play football? No. He don't feel he better than you. Talk to him. He don't. Maybe he don't want to feel bothered just like you don't want to be bothered. Yeah. <laughs> but it don't mean he think he better than you or anybody. He got a good job. Oh, he think he better. No, I don't. No, no, mm. she don't. Yeah, I just success scares, success scares people that doesn't that aren't that aren't happy with themselves. That's what it is. Like, how, how do you think uh, the community of Nashville done treated Black Rob? Love, good. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, it's love. true. You know what? If you would have said anything different, Black Rob, I would I would have straightened love. you out. Like because everybody uh, mess. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, you love your spots. You always kept the cool spots. Only thing people had a, I ain't gonna say a problem with, because I think you started this, right. um, and it was tip with the check, automatically gratuity. adding the gratuity. <laughs> Why did that start? Because people don't tip. You know right. what I mean? People don't understand. Like in this in this business, everybody gotta work. Yeah. Like they may not like gratuity on a check, but. Sometimes you don't tip. You can't have a hundred dollar tab and get somebody six dollars. Yeah, that thing. You gotta give them twenty percent. Got to. And if not, excuse me, we not gonna have workers to work these spots. You know what I mean? We ain't do it for us. We was putting gratuity to make sure we got oh, yeah. servers. Took you know what I mean? Off. Yeah, that's 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 the biggest thing. It ain't about we not putting it on there to make it all right. I didn't get this money. Nah, it's to pay your sir. And and and, and go to what you say. A lot of people did that because of us, but people around uh, a lot of people did it. Yeah, yeah I, I did I, it I, because I, of us. A the, lot of things. I'm like, giving you that. A lot of things that we've done, I've watched other people do right or wrong. Yeah. And sometimes I'd be like, why are they doing it? That one is. We ain't even. That wasn't a good idea yeah. for us. But yeah. since we do it, they do it, and it's like, eh, I wouldn't have took that idea. But hey, you want to copy us? Copy us. Like they weren't smart. But everybody around the world, I mean, the country is putting gratuity on everything. Because, like, you got to think, man, it, the cost of living in Nashville is crazy. Ah, like, you crazy. can't. Yeah. And and I want to ask you this, just, just from a, a manly point of view. Like, right. do you pick your your servers and stuff out? <laughs> you know <laughs> no, what I'm saying? No you I you have to. to. I bet you. The weekend. Who picked the weekend servers out? Man. Honestly, it was probably my, my managers. A lot of them. Them motherfuckers bad. <laughs> 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 Man, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And so Them what? My look, people, I love all our all the old weekend girls. Like, Man. We still. Does like Black Rob see himself playing himself in Nashville for a, a long time? Because you done got kind of comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Never, see, see, that's the thing. Comf comfortability. It's, okay. It, 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 it didn't. It, Stop success. Okay. I never want to be comfortable, but I've been getting comfortable. So I, I, I make myself uncomfortable. Like right now, I'm opening my, my, I got a supper club. I'm opening a new restaurant. What is yeah, it called? Bungalow I just saw 10. It on the new, on the new something. station. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's a new restaurant. Bungalow it's, 10. Bungalow 10 is next to supper club. Mm -hmm. And then behind Bungalow 10, we got Jar Cocktail Club. That's opening it. They both opening in January this month. And then, Next to it, I'm opening a cigar bar behind Supper Club. So it's a whole bunch of stuff I'm working on. I'm I want I'm working on bringing Weekend back. Oh, Brian, so, please, Black Rob, everybody in Nashville is gonna beg you. Man. Please bring Weekend people, back. That was our favorite club. Listen, people, people we came, they, bro. They love you. They what they say? They love you, then they hate you, and they love you again. Yeah. It's like we people kept weekend sold out. Uh, listen, Black but Rob. what I'm saying is, you don't miss. It's like your girl, you don't miss her until she leave you, and then you miss. We her. was there before. We missed her before I she know, left. I know, but what I'm saying is, sometimes you like 
Weekend was great. It did 10 years. We didn't resign our lease. They wouldn't sign it. They wouldn't okay. resign it. Uh, you know Nashville. They yeah. building hotels. They yeah. Um, but we we plan on bringing it back. But I think after I do weekend, I do want to go to other markets because I like I don't want to be, I don't want to be just local. You know what I mean? But you can own a lot local. You was just talking about guys that own half of Miami. Yeah, but I, I you can I, own half of because we trust your service. Yeah, I, but it's bigger. Guy yeah. got more. Almost definitely. Like Most I definitely. got stuff in Memphis, so yeah. it's, it's it's spam. But I want to get outside of Tennessee as well. I want mm -hmm. my goal. I want to build a hospitality company that's nine figures. That's the biggest make a play hospitality group. I want it to be the biggest um, hospitality company in the country. What market do you want to hit just to really stamp your name and I'm Black Rob? Because it used to be. I Atlanta. believe in you. Okay. Okay. Miami and Houston. That's what I was gonna say. I was. I was finna say, I would want, I would love to see you hit Miami or Houston. I, I won't say Miami, but or Houston, yeah. and put that black rock. Because there. people don't, it's like people don't give you. It's like people don't really put you up there until you go to where the, they say the dogs at. Yeah, yeah. And the dogs is in Miami, and now they they went from Atlanta to Houston, so that's where they say it says. So I want to go where the dogs at. You know what I mean? Cause I'm a dog. Is it, it, Black Rob wouldn't do a reality show on what you do? Man, I've been hit with a reality show so many times. Come on, no cap. Black, you turning down? You trying Man. to turn down me reality show? <laughs> you turning down too much? Nah, it's just it's just that that ain't. I want if anytime I get on, anytime I do something, I want to exude positivity. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? I want to exude something that you could get something and take away with you. I don't want to. I don't want to play. I don't play in the pig pen. You know what I mean? Like that just ain't me. I don't want to play in the pig pen because it's it, it's dirty down there. Yeah, but they but mm -hmm. you know if they come with something like that, they coming with a check. It ain't so about you, money. Okay, come on, man. Life I know. Don't okay, around. okay. You can't do nothing for money when you do yeah. things for okay. money. You never be successful. Anybody okay. I always know that opened a club, any any hospitality, any business, did it straight for the money. They never was successful. When you do stuff you love, you be successful. In your mind, how did you outlast club owners with how you came up? And now Black Rob <laughs> is what the only one with a club from back then. How did I? I mean, outlast? clubs and restaurants, yeah, just how, the entertainment. I think I think that, like, I got my homeboy got a book, Joshua Mundy. He got a book called Unshakable Faith. Mm -hmm. I got Unshakable Faith. Faith. I got unshakable faith, unshakable. unbreakable. <laughs> yes, like you hear me? What yeah. God got for me is for me. Yeah. I don't care what nobody say. Ain't nothing you can. No weapon formed against me will prosper. <sighs> nothing. Where did that faith nothing. come from? Did it? St. Louis, Ooh. Minerva Avenue. <clears throat> I had to grow up like that. That's why I understand how you from the hood. You don't have that. That that dog. That <clears throat> man. I had to. I'm talking about socks in the bathtub. I knew you. I should have knew you from the hood. I was man doing all that. You had me fooled for a minute. We turned the lights on, roaches and rats. Like, well, I didn't want to go back to that. I want penthouses and townhouses. I had that at 22. Facts. Man, what we talk like? What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Like, I didn't want to. Why go back to that? What are we talking about? Like, gang, like gangster is doing putting on for your hood. Yeah. I don't want to be in an image of a. Uh, that ain't how we grow the black man. What do your people say? <laughs> <laughs> what do no nah, black Rob, seriously? What do your people say when you go back to St. Louis? Like, and this ain't trying to ride Black Rob telling them, but you are really a black successful man. And I have watched you do this from the ground up. So what your people be like they when you go back flowers. there? You, oh yeah, you got them. They give me my flowers. Yeah, they appreciate you. Boosie said this, you get more love from other people than you do from your home. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I, right now, I get plenty of love in Nashville. Mm -hmm. When I go other places, I see it. Because they don't, they don't get to see me I know Memphis, time. too. You have a lot of birthday parties yeah, and stuff Memphis, in Memphis. Yeah, I love Memphis. Memphis is like, man, I just wish Memphis... They just they just get they with they they got that stigma about mm -hmm. them you know they don't want to go to Memphis get up Memphis is a beautiful city do, do they support more than Nashville you you think man they they how they do they mm -hmm. not 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 let me say this no okay. no because Nashville has helped me yeah tremendously Bex. love this city 
I love Memphis. Mm -hmm. I think it's the ports different. They support in what they saw me do from afar. Yeah. Nashville support me from what they saw me do from the bottom. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like we saw that. Memphis, like, we saw you, we heard, and we support. And they support everything we do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's what just makes, like, I want to, you know, it's, you got to stretch out. You got to spread your wings. What makes you stay humble? Because um, even though we know Black Rob, Black Rob going to pull up in that Benz truck, you ain't no telling what he might pull up in. He might pull out the jewelry. What makes you stay humble? Because I ain't never just saw you out here just, I'm Black Rob and this and that, this and that. Cause I, what cause, keeps you humble? Because I'm, I'm, I bleed like any other man. I put my pants on the same way. And I just don't believe that nothing I have can't be taken away. I, I've experienced rock bottom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I experienced having stuff taken away from me. So it's like, I never want to go through that experience again. So when I, anytime I get it, I don't act like it can't be taken away. Yeah. That God can't wake me up. And I go to church and I listen to Bishop Walker so much. And his, it's like every week he got a testimony that, speaks to where I'm at now. So it's like, who are you to be, who are, who are, who am I to walk around like my shit don't stink? You know what I mean? So it's like, I just keep my head up and work and hopefully my work motivates people. I don't want my work to make it, to make, or my success to make people feel I'm arrogant. My success should motivate you and I'm gonna show you the success and I want you to do what I'm doing or I want you to, figure out what you want to do and learn from what I'm doing, the mistakes I made. I have never heard you cry before. I ain't never, you know, uh, heard you want to run. Y'all ain't supporting me. Y'all ain't doing, I ain't never heard you cry. So who is Black Rob calling when it's time for you to get a little support or you to get a little energy? Man, sometimes I break you know down. And sometimes, I, I mean, I break down. I, man, I, my I'm, best friend you know what I'm is saying? Tez. You know what I call Tez about a lot of stuff. Okay. I broke down, I might call Bishop. I yeah. call Bishop That's when I yeah. broke down. Um, I mean, like sometimes I get on my knees. You know what I mean? I call God. Most definitely. You feel yeah. me? Like it's 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 things that you gotta do in a time of need. And I'm just a big believer of that. You know what I mean? Like I had some stuff happen to me I would that could have broke me, but it didn't. That let me know I'm Teflon Don. I can make it. No, I <laughs> hey, look, and, and this ain't this ain't shit talking back, Rob. Like we didn't I know for a fact everybody going through something, but every time when you see Black Rob, he always got his head held up. I'm saying, like, he ain't always happy. You know what nah, I'm saying? Nah, <laughs> nah, no, no, no. But why be mad for? Like, why be mad? Yeah. You know, people going to do people, like, man, it's so many mad people out here. Why yeah. I want to be the next one? One of them, yeah. Like, tomorrow, we don't know what our... When our when it, you know, why you am I know. be mad? Last thing I get up there, guy talking about, you ready to come in? Like, yeah, he like, you know, you was tripping off something somebody said on you on Twitter. But. You, did you know that you was mad? And I was trying to tell you, you finna come on home. You should oh, yeah. smile, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> like, nah, what was you mad? Nah, it's like, I don't, I don't want to live like that. Yeah. yeah. I don't want that. I don't want that, that crowd, that cloud around me. And where do you think you get that trait from? Like mom's side or dad's side? My mom, Just my mom got from. a heart of gold. Mm -hmm. Like, People done did me wrong and I still will help them. Facts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause I it ain't even about what you did. It's my karma. Yeah. Karma's believe it or not, karma's real. It's super duper real. You put good karma out, you get it. You get bad karma, well, you get, get it. it. I don't care what, what you, you say. Get, yeah. It's coming back. Yeah. So it's like, I just try to I, I try to do what my mom would do mm -hmm. and treat them how my mom would treat people. So it's like, I move like that. Mm -hmm. Everything I do, I move like that. It is like, man, I gotta do. Do you eat at your own restaurants and stuff a lot, Black Rob? Or do yeah. you? Okay, that was, that's why I need to go to the gym. Man, listen, man, I be, man, listen, I'm so, man, I be supper clubbing so much right now. I can't wait the bungalow open. I'm gonna be yeah. bungalowing for about two, three months. Do Do you eat for free? or Do you pay for your time? I pay for my food. You sure? I'm positive. Okay, I just ask asked anybody. All right. I like Rob, your checks here. They be like, you okay. paying for that yet? Yeah, Cause yeah. it costs. Okay. It Call. Ain't nothing free. Yeah. People people be coming in like, man, you got it. You like they just come in like you gonna pay. No, this 
This stuff costs. paying. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this stuff ain't free. Somebody paying for all this food. And, and, and is that why you feel like if I'm paying and I'm tipping, you sure going to. Come on now. <laughs> why should I, if I'm paying for my own stuff and I get no discounts, why would you come in and get something free? Yeah. You know what I mean? And, but, but how do you deal with that, Rob, when you got, you know, you got cool, I got cool women coming in, dudes, and like they know this is your establishment. Right. And they want something free. Yeah. How do I deal with it? How do you, how do you man, deal listen, with it? I, at this point, man, I just, <laughs> I keep, man, I'm so, I just, t look, man, I can't do that. I laugh it off when people ask me for something free. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. But, but I saw you, and uh, shout out to, uh, to Buck. I saw Buck come to your club. Man, get Buck some drinks. You know what I'm saying? So right. one thing, I'm a, you always going to, you know what I'm saying, I do that. Up. I, yeah. I mean, it don't even matter who it is. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm going to always, look, man, what you drinking? What your, I'm going yeah. to buy you a shot. Yeah. I done got, do got plenty of them. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So, right, here yeah. you go. Where you, don't, where you want something? I got you. Like, because, man, sometimes people just want that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going to be as hospitable as possible. That's good. Very That's hospitable, good. man. That's good. Like, well, because you got five places, so you need right. them to come, you know what I'm right. saying? Right. It's growing. So, I, I got I to, gotta, you know, I want to show love because I get love. How can and, we help you more, Black Robert, if you're last subscribe show, just to make sure everything stay prosperous for you? You know what I'm saying? Man, I think on my end, it's just like, you can help me by continuing to be successful. Okay. Like, I love to see success, especially out of Nashville. Yeah. You know what I mean? I see somebody being successful, that's more. That's one more person I, I got a relationship with that I can use their resources for my success. You know what I mean? Because I look at it like, if somebody go out of Nashville, that's just one person that's going to open up doors to help me go where I need to go. He might build relationships with people that didn't call me because I got a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. So I want to see people out this city yeah. win. Because if they win, I win. Right. Because I'm definitely going to lean on you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to lean yeah. on you. Like, what's up? I need this. Help me. And, and so now, my question is to you, Black Rob. Who is the coldest club owner in this city? Rob. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, that's, I'm, just saying, no, I'm just saying. like, It ain't on, being hairless. I'm no, just, it's not. It's not okay. even being arrogant. I'm just like, asking the question. I mean, because I knew you was gonna ask this. I'm just That's asking the like, question. Yo, I knew you was gonna ask. This. I was just asking Wait, the question. I knew you was gonna ask. This. Okay. I don't take nothing away from nobody. I didn't say you did. But, like, just so we can get this clear, I never looked at, and this is no shake to nobody. No, not at all. I never looked at no club owners in Nashville as my motivation. Okay. So when you say like. Who's the best in the city? They could be the best in the city. I want to be the best in the world, in the country, in the, in the world. Like, I'm not even looking down yeah. here. Yeah. I'm looking <laughs> this way. It's so it's like we don't even compare. Yeah. Because you compete with the city, and the I'm city. competing with something outside. Yes. Okay. okay. I'm trying, you trying to be all states. I'm trying want to, to say it like that. That was a good analogy, you know but keep I mean? going though. You I'm know, trying to go, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to go to the <laughs> league out of Nashville. Okay. You feel me? Like Darius. I ain't trying to be just. A, a good high school player. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's the difference, or a good college player. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to go to the league, so I'm looking at people, I'm looking at Curtis Givens. Like, I always, like, he in Memphis, this ain't yeah. too far, but I always looked up to what he's done because Ooh. no matter what he's done Shout at a high Curtis level. Shout out Curtis Givens, I love, He's yeah. done it at a high level yeah. for a long time. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, for people to say they good, he probably, he started way before me, at least five, six years before Didn't he me. Didn't he level two? Yeah. Okay, yeah, level and two. he's still going 20 yeah. some years yeah. later. So, so you like, influenced by something bigger anyway. And, and, and you know what I'm like, saying? You got some it's Mark Barnes. I think Mark Barnes is the GOAT. Mm -hmm. Like I study the people that's been doing it for 20 plus years yeah, at yeah. a high level. level. Yeah. You know, high level means I walk in, I see how you set your clubs. I see how you set your booths, your bottle soles, your service, how you conduct business, mm -hmm. how the ambiance look. I study all that yeah. at the high level, what cities you in. Like I watch the people that's doing it at high level. level. I think Mark Barnes is the GOAT, my opinion. I think um, Alex Gilwine is like the godfather. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think them two are on levels that nobody has ever, like, that's, you give them, like, I that level that they did is is is, is, is not unattainable, but it's, it's, it's a big level what they did. That's why I respect, you know I'm going to tell you why I respect what you just did. My producer will tell you, when I first started the podcast, you know what I told him? I'm not competing with nobody in Nashville. If I'm competing, it's like with Million Dollar Perfect Game and yeah. all them type of people. Want, so, I, so why I got to respect what you're saying? Because your mind was 
even though I'm asking a question, which yeah. is cool, but your mind was like, nah, I'm bigger than Nazareth. I want to be the biggest. I I'm trying to biggest. catch up to them guys. I'm trying to, like, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at them yeah. because they been doing it. Like, and they doing it in big markets. You dig what I'm saying? Well, mm -hmm. Memphis ain't that big, but I, I, I was, I told Curtis, is it any market, he's a, he's a great, Oh yeah, he can come down here throw a party and yeah. it's gonna go. I mean, not even just here. I'm saying well, I'm just, just big yeah, markets, Atlanta, facts. Miami. Like yeah. he's you a great a great businessman. A great mind is a great mind anywhere. Alex can go anywhere. He's a great. He's just a great club owner. He's just great hospitality. Yeah. Mark Barnes. He switched from clubs to restaurants and done it for 25, 30 years. Like how can you know? How can anybody like? How can we look at what we're doing? We had a good run and. In Nashville and yeah. compare that to anything exactly. like yeah. you, you know, you what you ain't outside of Nashville, you what? know what I'm saying? You did a you did a you had two good years. You Nick Van Axel. Do you think with coming with you, it start with hospitality? Yeah, yes. I mean, because I don't what's call your, myself. What's your greatest suit if you would say in club? What's your what's your greatest yo that you know like I got this? I feel like when I open some, it's con the experience that I give is conducive to the business that I open. Mm -hmm. I don't open restaurants trying to be clubs. Okay. I don't open clubs trying to be restaurants. restaurants. I don't open lounges and call them this. Like mm -hmm. it is what it is. And I feel like I can, I think I can touch. It's a very, it's a very pe peculiar trait when it comes to like hospitality. I don't even call myself a club owner. I call myself a restaurateur or a hospitality. Okay. I'm in hospitality. So it's just like, because it's so much more than just clubs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I can get the street dude, I can get the college, the college kid, the college dude, the college girl, I can get the the doctor, the lawyer, and I can get how the athletes did you do that? all because in one you place. Got all the how? All in one and I can get the pretty the, the, the pretty girls, the, the 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 rich dudes, the social media. I all of them will come in one place. Right. Not too many people can get all those different crowds. You're right. Like I can't. I can relate to all those people and they get all party. That's what made weekend so special because it had everybody can say they've been there. Yeah. It's not too many spots that Gucci Man was just in Minerva. <laughs> right. Right. He was. Gucci Man was just in Minerva. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so, but I'm just saying, how do you think, and we're gonna end it in a minute, but how do you think that you brought all those genres together? Because I was uh, I had a piece of that in me and all those drawings. Mm. You know what I mean? See, you went through all the... I went through, like, I can't, I was in college. I I had friends that went to medical school and professional, and I, and I carried myself as one. You know what I mean? I know all the pretty girls, and I know all the dudes with money, but I also know all the street dudes yeah. because I relate to them, and I and I can have, con like, we cool. Yeah. Like, so, a lot of my friends. Rex. You know what I mean? So it's like everybody, you know what I mean? And so it's like, I was able to relate. I can relate to everybody. I, I could be a chameleon in any situation. So I can able to get these people and they trust me. They trust my product because they seen it. Mm. They was coming to my parties. And they was seeing like, dang, it's popping. You know what I mean? So imagine what he going to do when he get a, a venue. So club. When, but when you, and real quick, when you first start parties, you never thought about, you know what, I'm going to, it wasn't even in the thought that you're going to have all this stuff, what you got now. You know what I'm saying? Just nah. Like the, the, no, the, it was. The, okay, that's what I was at. I like, know if, I had a vision. Okay. I got a vision. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Mm. I said when I when I get I opened jazz and jokes when I was 22 years mm. old. I know that spot. Yeah, Third I Avenue. opened jazz and jokes when I was 22 years old. Like I wanted. I didn't a, even know I that was you. Venue. Yeah, yes, <laughs> you I wanted a venue. I was still in college. You know what I mean? I wanted that. So it's like I seen all this before I had it. Like I seen myself. Everything I did, I seen myself doing it. Like I see myself what I'm doing now. You know what I mean? I, would, I seen myself 27 building a house. Was any one of these spots you did that you wish you never done it is you, and you kind of went on the leg of doing it, any one of your spots? So, some of my spots wasn't as successful, but everything was a learning lesson. Okay, yeah. So that's like, how you... It's never... It's, what they say is never a no loss. It's a lesson. It's a lesson. You know what I mean? It was all lessons. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everything I went through was a lesson. So it's like, hell yeah. I, I The L's I took, I learned. Mm. So it's like, why not? Fuck it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ain't nothing I did that I, I wish I didn't do. You ain't scared. Of, hey, look, Rob, you know this thing. You ain't scared of nothing. Nothing. Here. You ain't, ain't nothing. Ain't and nothing. that ain't, ain't me just saying that his his everything proves it from what right. you. Nobody thought I, nobody said I could do everything and I'm doing. Like, they don't do this. Everybody told me don't do everything I'm doing. Wow. 
Weekend, I was Anymore. told not to do weekend. Wow. You can't do weekend. It's on the gay street. <laughs> Nobody's going to the gayborhood. <laughs> what they call it? The gayborhood. The gayborhood. <laughs> Y'all know it used to be the gayborhood. Yeah, I know, yeah. That whole block. Play and all that. All that. Yeah. It was like, nobody's going there. That's the dumbest thing ever. And that was one of the best clubs. Ari was there. <laughs> when when you coming back, Ari? Man, you know what listen, I'm we didn't had we didn't had a lot of people. Yeah, and Bow Wow it, was the, what, yeah, uh, yeah, Bow Wow. Bow? We didn't done so many people through the weekend. We didn't. It's so many experiences. Like, I, I man, I miss it. I think you was um, and they been they they do it, but you've done it more. You bring a lot of the good DJs, like DJ Envy and stuff. Right. How you pick, like, how you pick your artist? Do you wait till they like they like come here? Or you just kind of book them, like. So back in the day, I used to. It was easy to do it because mm-hmm. they wasn't costing as much. Now artists cost, <sighs> man. Like, oh my, it's goodness. crazy. Don't want to book. Nah, I'm not. It's crazy. Like, I we could book people. They come in, they party. Crisis was my partner, a DJ. Shout so, out to Crisis again. He saw it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So he knew a lot of the DJs. And then, so when he bring them in, it was just like, let's do him, let's do him. Or he might know some artists. Or I might know some artists. We used to always book them. You know what I mean? But now it's like everybody costs so much and everybody still want to pay the same thing they was paying back in 2010. It's like, nah, we can't. Uh, you know, it makes sense. Is Black Rob, before we go, is Black Rob thinking about doing a, a big club in Nashville? Have you so had I, that thought yet? I've been... I've been given the opportunity to. That's what I, I, I kind of you know figured I mean? that. I got some, I got some more stuff coming. I'm bringing like, I wanna, I'm not, one of my spots I'm opening would be what agenda was, but where I'm at in my life now. You know what I mean? Like when I, what I did with agenda then was where I was at in my life now. Mm-hmm. So what I do now is my version of that, but where I'm at now. So that uh, we looking for that, like we want another agenda, man. Tell my people, these people, some folk, you go, man. Encourage a, a black man. Rob. I'm telling you, this is and not to. I am not keep. I'm keeping it solid. Like this is a be- very, very successful black man in Nashville, Tennessee, that has done some great, amazing things. So we joke and we have a good time with it, but you really want to listen. Give them some, man. All I must. Well, what I can say is, you know, what I mean. One thing about it that I always go by is, man, keep your vision. Don't let nobody knock your vision. Don't let nobody tell you what you can't do. Don't let nobody derail you from what God got planned for you. You got you to gotta believe in it. God always going to send us signs. He's going to send us signs of where we need to be in life. You got to learn how to speak. You got to learn how to speak sign language. You know what I mean? You can take them signs and take them with you. Keep the vision. Don't protect the vision at all costs. Protect the vision. If you're alive, subscribe. Yes, sir. Ah!